As one of the best cameras to start your YouTube career with in 2017 and most likely 2018, the Canon SL2 aka 200D definitely deserves some videos on this channel. With precise and reliable dual pixel autofocus, a tilt swivel flip screen with a very good touch interface, the ability to hook up external audio, an interchangeable lens mount system and all of this within a pretty compact and lightweight form factor for a DSLR, there's lots to love about this camera. If, however, you predominantly want to use this camera for vlogging, you might be interested in an upgrade. Now the internal audio of the SL2, believe it or not, for an internal system actually delivers quite a decent performance. Compared to what you're getting from say the Sony A5100 right here, it's quite a step up to the SL2. Then again, bear in mind that the A5100 belongs to an older generation of cameras. So as all technology is advanced, so are the internal microphone systems. I'd go as far as saying if you're not looking to invest into an external shotgun mic right now, you can get away using the internal mics of the SL2, given that you also use micro wind muffs for wind protection. Still, if you want to use this camera outside a lot, using external audio remains a recommendation of mine because of these three important upsides. Number one, in scenarios like this where there's lots of ambient sounds, the directional pickup pattern of an external shotgun microphone will make your voice clearer, fuller and favored in relation to the ambience. Two, in a windy situation you're gonna be far better off using an external microphone solution because the options for wind protection are much more effective. And when you're shooting in a silent or a studio-like environment where usually with entry-level cameras static noise becomes a problem, a microphone pre-gain will noticeably help that. So let's check out some options for upping your audio game when vlogging. So let's take care of the first microphone. Obviously the perfect placement is with the holes for the microphone right in the middle of the pad. Now this option will block the flashlight of the camera completely once the micro wind muff is applied. So if you intend to use this, this is a no-go solution. By the way, the flash release button still works. Now this is a little tricky, we will just have to fiddle around with this until the pad sits correctly. Alright, second pad applied. And let's apply the wind muff to the pad. Apply firm pressure to make sure it's a perfect fit. Also, feel free to trim where trimming is needed. And this is how you apply micro wind muffs to the Canon SL2 body. Now, should you choose to invest into an external shotgun microphone, here's a pretty decent budget option. This is the Textar SGC 598. It's a directional shotgun mic that comes with its own foam wind muff, which we're gonna improve upon in a moment. It has a built-in low cut filter, a plus 10 decibel pre-gain. On the back is the status indication LED. It has a shock mount and even comes with a rudimentary but still very useful cable management. It runs off of a simple AA battery or AA rechargeable. On the bottom, a standard plastic hot shoe mount. Now you can install it the regular way with the hot shoe mount sitting right in the middle, which would then look like this, but I don't like that the microphone sits as far back as it does. So right away we're going to customize and I'm going to unscrew the hot shoe mount and place it back here. And this way, once you apply the microphone, it'll sit like this, which I think simply looks cooler. Now to hook the camera up to the microphone, simply plug it into the 3.5mm mic jack on the side of the camera. Now this step is optional, but very much recommended if you want to use the camera outside a lot. So I found the perfect dead cat to go with the Techstar SGC598. It's from Ceramonic and actually intended for a completely different mic, but it fits perfectly. So just slide it over the front of the microphone and you're good to go. So let's compare noise levels. Internal mics versus external mic. Once again, in a windy situation, let's compare configurations. And as far as directionality is concerned, here's what the SL2's internal mics sound like in a scenario with lots of ambient noise. And this is what the Techstar SGC 598 can do for you in the same situation. Okay, 
so much for audio. Now, let's talk about the most important thing, what vlogging actually means. Vlogging is you and the world. You telling stories via a camera about the dynamics that continuously shape that relationship. And a great visual representation of that, the best in my opinion, is accomplished by the super wide angle. Because it quite simply shows a lot of the world around you with yourself right in the middle. What you're looking at right now is the 18 to 55 kit lens at its 18 millimeter wide end at about selfie distance. And in my opinion, this is too narrow a viewing angle for vlogging. So let's check out what is widely regarded as the best budget bang for your buck lens when it comes to vlogging with a Canon APS-C camera. Now this is the Canon 10 to 18 millimeter image stabilized super wide angle zoom. The only downside is that it's a pretty slow lens, starting at an f4.5. So in a low light situation, there are better lenses. But apart from that, it's the perfect fit. It is super lightweight, so the plastic mount isn't a problem. It is a stabilized lens that's autofocus capable, of course. It has a silent stepping motor, so for video, no unwanted autofocus motor noise on the audio. But the best thing about the super wide angle zoom is it comes in at an unbeatable price point. Just compare it to the corresponding super wide angles from Sony or for example Panasonic. Now I'll just line up the wide squares. There's one on the lens and one on the camera body. Turn until it clicks and now we're done. Now apart from the other upsides of this lens, here's what makes it great for vlogging. Once again, this is the 18 to 55 kit lens at its 18 millimeter wide end at about selfie distance. Of course, this also happens to be what you're getting from the 10 to 18 at 18 millimeters. Only this time, it's the tele end of the lens. So now let's check out what the 10 millimeter wide end can do for us. And in my book, that's the way better aesthetic for vlogging. Now, as far as the SD card goes, I know that my SL2 records 1080p 60 frames per second with 60 megabit per second. In my case, this means I need an SD card class 10 speed class and UHS speed class 1. If you're interested in SD card speeds, if you never heard the term minimum sequential write speed, check out the video that I've linked up here. It goes into detail about this problem. As far as the lens goes, I always use a simple UV filter for protection. And it's quite simply a great idea because if you want to resell tech and I've done that over the past decade. A scratch on the front of the lens drops the value by at least 20 to 30% easy. I also always like to use a third party lens hood. Also, I always protect the back of the screen. And me personally, I like to use the 9H tempered glass. Clean the screen. And then carefully apply the screen protection. Just let it do its thing. Don't force it and it's done. So I like to get one of these dual chargers. They charge slowly, they're cheap, but they're reliable. I also like to get at least two third-party batteries. Usually they don't last as long as the original batteries, but they're way cheaper. So in the end, they're the better deal. Bear in mind though, that when you're using third-party batteries, unfortunately, the battery charge status indicator icon up here doesn't work. So this is it. My whole decent budget SL2 vlog setup. Micro wind muffs to protect the internal microphones from wind distortion. Durable screen protection for the tilt swivel screen. The perfect SD card for your daily vlogging needs, the best budget bang for your buck lens when it comes to vlogging with a Canon APS-C camera, protected by a simple UV filter and accompanied by a third-party lens hood, a decent directional shotgun mic with a low-cut filter and a plus 10 decibel pre-gain, plus two third-party batteries and a dual charger. So if you liked the video, if you found it helpful, please make sure to leave a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated. Any kind of comment or feedback is welcome and I'll try to answer as quickly as possible. As always, thank you so much for your time, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon.